Hi, I'm Heather Maliuk, owner and audiologist at Soundcheck Audiology. And in this video, I'm going to be going over ASI Audio's 3DME in-ear monitors slash tunable earplugs. It doesn't matter if this is um, being used for you as a demo right now, if you purchase the system, maybe you're in an orchestra, maybe you're in a rock band. I don't care, I'm gonna go over everything. And I do believe this is a device for you, regardless of what you're doing. I call it the Swiss Army Knife for ears. So let's get started. Right now I have the earpieces around my neck, sitting on my shoulders. If you've never worn something with a cable, if you've never used in your monitors before, this is the way to do it. Um, some people, when they get them for the first time, they'll put the cables in front of them, hanging in front of them. Uh, they can get in your way if you do that. So put them around your head, Put them comfortably ar around your shoulders. And the first step is to really pick out ear pieces that fit you. Okay, so, or ear tips, I should say. Many people get custom made tips. Those are great for uh, a consistent seal, a consistent fit that will go in the same every time. But I know many people who use the universal fit tips and do very well with them. So it kind of depends on you. Ears are like snowflakes. You'll find something that works for you. The goal of any tip is to get a really isolating seal that will block you from the world around you when you put the earpieces in. For me, right now I'm using a small foam universal fit tip, and I'm gonna show you how to put it on to the earpiece. I have one on already. I'm gonna put it on this one. I'm taking the opening of the foam tip. I'm gonna put it to the sound bore of the 3DME earpiece. And as I'm pushing it on, I'm gonna twist a little bit. And I'm getting it all the way onto the earpiece, all the way to the body of the earpiece. You can't see any of the soundboard now. That's really important. You wanna make sure it's really on and it's secure and snug. When you take it off, you're gonna actually do sort of the same movement. You'll pull and twist to get it off. These earpieces have an R for the right ear and an L for the left ear. So you can certainly tell them apart that way. They also have a two-prong connector that's gonna to go to your belt pack. On the belt pack, on the side, you'll see two holes for the two prong connector. Imagine that, very user friendly. So I'm gonna put this right in here, plug it all the way in, and let's talk about the belt pack for a second. It's called a belt pack. You can put it on your belt via this clasp or whatever it's called. You can also sit the pack on the chair behind you. You could put it in a shirt pocket. What, whatever is comfortable for you is fine with me. If you're someone who's using a monitor feed from a wireless belt pack, there is a hole, an input jack on the side of the belt pack. You will jump or click cable from your belt pack into this one, okay? And you'll just wear them side by side. So that's how that works. You'll just go right into this input. At the top of the belt pack, there's a plus sign and a minus sign. These can be used for onboard volume control in the app. I'll also show you how to set them up as a toggle switch so that you can use two different settings. Next to these, there are four green lights. These are your battery indicator, your battery status indicator. Right now I have a full charge. So I have all four lights on. I love having a full charge. It's like a full tank of gas. Uh, when I have a full charge, I can probably go for nine to 11 hours of playtime with this. If you only have one light on, you might wanna charge it for a little bit. Let me turn that back off. I turned it off via the on off switch right here. Okay, so this switch turns it on or off. Leave it off until you get the earpieces in your ears. There are some lights here. These are indicators for charging. So when you have it plugged in, you'll see these turn on to tell you if it's done charging or not. You have a mini USB here for charging. All right, let's go to insertion. The pack is off. That, I think that's the most important thing is to leave the pack off. And the reason why I'm saying that is this is an active ambient in-ear monitor system. There are mics on the earpieces that are going to sound like your open ears. To get a really good seal, you don't want to be able to hear that. You want to feel like you're putting in earplugs so you know you're blocked. So what I'm going to do is put this earpiece in my ear. You might be someone who needs to take the foam and squish it down. I don't need to do that so much, so I'm not going to, but if you need to, that's fine. I'm gonna put the foam directly into my ear canal, and then the ear piece, I'm gonna just twist back just slightly to get this seated in the bowl, the concha of my ear, and the cable will go up and over my pinna. 
this part of my ear. Okay, so let me do that again so you can see. Foam tip goes in, goes slightly back, a little twist back, make sure the cable's up and over the ear. If I did not have this in properly, I wouldn't feel blocked. It would be hanging out and wouldn't be sealing. It would be, you know, a jar about to fall out. So when it's in, it's really in. If you've done this a few times and it doesn't feel right and you don't feel blocked, you might need a different size tip. I'm gonna do the same thing on this ear. I'm putting the tip in, give it a slight twist back till I feel it seated totally in the bowl of my ear, cable up and over, both ear pieces are in place. Okay, good. On the cable, there's a black box. Let me get it here so I can show you. This can be used to tighten the cable behind your head. I highly recommend doing that so you get a good, snug, secure fit. Right now, I have both ear pieces in. I'm totally blocked from the room. I feel like my head's in a barrel and I can't hear a thing. That's good. That means I have a really good seal. On the pack, I'm going to turn it on. And now I can hear myself again. I heard the pack come on. I hear the mics come on. So that means it's working. Um, and it also means since the pack is on, I can now use the app and I can make some adjustments. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to go over app functionality. Let's open the ASI Audio app. Right now I have my belt pack off. I'm going to press on the Bluetooth symbol at the upper left hand side and turn my belt pack on so that it can be found. So right now it's connecting and it says connected. I have connected previously to my app so I did not get a pairing request this time. If you're doing this for the first time you'll get a pop-up that says do you want to pair the device? And you would select pair so that it can be connected. Back at the main screen, it's going to read out the belt pack. If you're someone who's using this right now as a demo and someone else had it before you, their settings that they left will come into the app. Everything you do in the app, every little adjustment you make automatically saves to the belt pack. So when you disconnect it from the app, everything will be in there. But when you reconnect it to the app, the settings that are in the belt pack will be loaded. So, a couple things on this main page. First things first, you have put the earpieces in and maybe you want to make sure that you have a perfect seal. At the upper right hand side there is a seal test. I highly recommend doing that. It will take you to a test that will play you tones and you'll be listening for them to see if you have a good isolating seal. If you fail the test, you might need to have different ear tips or maybe your insertion wasn't done well. So that's a really great tool to use. Also at the bottom right hand side, you can see a battery. That is the battery status of the belt pack of the 3DME. Now on this page, we have mic level and we have limiter. The mic level right now is set to join. That means the ears are going to be adjusted together. And that's the way that most people will use this system. For individuals who might have different preferences for listening or perhaps have different hearing statuses between their ears, they might want to have the ears separate. And then things can be adjusted right ear or left ear. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to join them. The plus signs to the left of the numbers will increase the volume or intensity of the mics or gain. You can also decrease or you can leave it at zero. To the right hand side, we have a limiter in dBSPL. Right now it's on. It can be turned off if you'd like to have it off. I'm gonna leave it on because I love safety. So on this limiter, there are numbers to the left hand side. Those are dBSPL values. Say you're someone who would rather leave the mics at zero. That's fine. And yet you wanna be protected against high intensity sounds. You can set the limiter to 90, 93, what, whatever works for you, meaning you should have an idea of your sound levels and your length of exposure, and perhaps through knowledge you've acquired or making a decision with your audiologist or me, we can decide what might be safe for you with the limiter. And that can be set and can be left. The second page of the app is the equalizer page. Right now I have the ears separated. You can see left ear, and right ear. They can be EQ'd separately. 
or you can join them. Again, for most people, you'll probably leave them joined. Your ears work together. And if the hearing status of your ears is equal and your sound exposure is fairly equal, you'll probably just leave this joined. On these bands of frequencies, this is a center frequency. When you adjust, you're actually adjusting that center frequency and frequencies nearby. You can increase or you can decrease the volume. I really encourage you to take some time and play around with this. If you have the opportunity to take a good amount of time and really play around with it. Don't be afraid to do some, some crazy settings and see what you can get. If you're not sure what you've done and you want to compare it with a flat response, there's a button for that. You can press flat and EQ to do some comparisons. Maybe you're someone who did not adjust the mic volume on the main page, but you'd like to decrease some of the low frequencies or increase some of the highs, you can do that. Or you can leave it at zero. You don't have to do anything with the EQ if you don't want to, that's completely fine. But that's how this works. At the options page, you have body pack buttons, step mode or preset mode. When I showed you the plus and minus buttons on the belt pack, this is where you set their functionality. When they're in step mode, they are volume control. The plus sign is to increase the volume. The minus sign is to decrease the volume. If you'd like to turn those buttons into a toggle switch, you simply select preset mode, and now you can make a preset. So what I'm gonna do as an example is I'm gonna go to the main page. I'm gonna increase the mics by 6 dB, and I'm gonna set my button right there. Or you could leave it at zero and set the button, that's fine too. Now for the negative button, the minus button, I'm gonna go back to the main page, I'm gonna turn the mics off, and I'm gonna press set. So now I have the option, say, say I'm on stage, and I'm a singer of a band, and I really don't like ambient sound coming in when I'm, pl when I'm singing or when I'm playing. I can now select the minus button for when I'm playing, but between songs, if I wanna communicate with my bandmates or my monitor engineer or what have you, I can select the plus button and I'll be able to hear them very clearly. For me personally, I like to have everything at zero and I'm gonna use it as a volume control so I can simply set these back to zero and select step mode. Right below this, we see cross connection. That stands for contralateral routing of signal. This is used by individuals who have single-sided deafness. Perhaps they're deaf in one ear or perhaps they have um, a music-induced hearing disorder in one ear, such as distortion or pitch perception issues. What this does is it takes the mic input from one ear and reroutes it to the opposite ear. So if I select left to right, the microphone input from the left earpiece is going to be rerouted to the right earpiece, and I'll hear it through my right ear. I can also do that for right to left. Lastly, on this app, there's a hamburger menu at the top right-hand side. You have the ability to save presets. So say you're someone who has a gig in the same venue once a month, you have a residency there and you have certain settings that you like. You don't have to set them at every sound check there. You can make your settings and you can press save and put in the name of the venue or the name of that band or whatever you want, the name of the orchestra, and you can save it under that preset. And then when you go back to that venue, you simply load whatever presets you have. I personally have one right here for studio work. Um, and you can put in you know, as many as you'd like here for however many different settings you'd like to have. And that goes over everything on the app. I hope all of that made sense and I hope this system is working well for you and I hope everything was understood. Um, if you have questions about anything, use of the app or how to insert the earpieces, I'm always happy to help. I also think the most important thing you can do is get an annual hearing test and educate yourself about safe use of devices like these and other in-ear monitors. If you ever want to set up a time to talk, please email me. Here's my email address, and hopefully I will hear from you and we can talk ears.